Machine shop. Yeah, boy. As soon as this game came out, I gave it a go, and man, was I surprised. The last hero of Nostalgia is very Souls-like in nature and adds a bit of video game nostalgia to all the characters and items you can find around the world. This lets the story run wild and give you an experience other video games just don't offer. And as per most Souls-based games, we have a magic system which allows you to use cool abilities and quote-unquote spells. The magic is considered source, and since the entire plot is themed around you being pixels, the spells you will collect look similar to coded items. These come in a variety of forms, and I will briefly go over some of them here in a bit. As far as how to use magic, you first need to select the correct character. I started with the Datadin, and he only had 10 ammo to start with. This can be found directly under your health and stamina bar. When checking out the help menu, I ran across a brief explanation of how this ammo is to be utilized by the player. Magical source items cost access. You can carry a maximum of 20 access and any extra you pick up will be placed in a storage. Resting at a beacon will take access from your storage or refill your current amount to 10 if you have none. So it seems this ammo is called access and it will be refilled upon resting at a beacon. Something interesting though is that when I chose the sorcerer as my character, I started with 13 access instead of just 10. So I assume this is because he's the magic based character and gets a slight bump to balance him out. So be sure to start with the sorcerer if you want to go into a less melee focused build. Another thing to take note of is that we can get more than this 10 or 13 source at any given time. Enemies will commonly drop more for you to pick up, refilling your reserves up to 20. I actually ended up with 23 on my sorcerer in the end game, further proving that advantage for him. When you pick this stuff up but are completely full, the extra will be thrown in storage. When you rest, you will gain the original amount, but any extra that was thrown in storage will also be given to you up to 20. And since there are plenty of enemies to fight, you will commonly have max source for boss fights and other important moments in the game. I do recommend a good source weapon as purely ranged magic will leave you bone dry of source rather quickly. But trust me, you can use plenty of magic abilities whenever you like and they provide a major advantage in combat. Is the magic balanced in the last hero of Nostalgia? As far as I experienced, yes, it's very balanced. Magic or source damage will obviously be stronger against enemy types who are weak to it. And since the source can keep you very safe while still doing damage, it doesn't outright demolish everything. My brother took strength as we played in co-op and his damage was noticeably higher, but he also had to put himself directly next to the enemy whereas I could shoot from safety if I really wanted to. Magic in this game is extremely good and I can prove this by saying I beat the game with my sorcerer character and the most I died to a single boss was two times. Source magic is varied with a lot of options and while not necessarily better than your other weapon types it more than holds its own in prolonged combat. Now that I've described the power of Source and how it works, what all can you do with it? I did beat the game, but unfortunately missed a few quest points, and there are plenty of items I probably have not uncovered. Nevertheless, I found multiple types of Source magic that were very cool, and while I won't show you exactly where to get them here, I will show you what they can do and what you have to look forward to. Homing Pixel Code is probably the first source of magic you can get your hands on. There's a shuriken given to the player early on in the game, but it seemed more for dexterity than source. The sorcerer starts with this homing ability, and it basically is a magic missile you find in other games. There's a very low cost associated with it, considering it only fires at one access, and as you scale your source damage, it will increase in damage as well. So while other magic options do more damage outright, this is the most cost effective ability in the game and will be pretty powerful in most battles. It's also hard to miss with this because like I said, it's a magic missile. It tries to home in on the enemy even if they dodge. I use this to demolish mob type enemies and clear out dungeons with ease. Not really the best against bosses because they're usually very aggressive and the cast time, while good, it still puts you in a bit of danger. But very usable in all situations if you want to focus on it. Prickly Mirror Code is very powerful, and I'm sad to say I did not utilize it as much as I should have. It costs one access to use and will spawn prickly crystals around your character. You can then walk up to enemies and passively deal damage to them. Essentially, it's a barrier that hurts enemies when they get too close. 
I wrote this off as soon as I got it because the homing pixel is far better for staying safe. But now I'm thinking this mirror could be great for bosses. They usually like to rush at you and often blocking three or four hits in succession will be required. So using this could let you still deal great damage even while you're focused on 100% defense. This ability is crazy cool and definitely useful for situations where range is not as easy to pull off. Chain mail code is a letter that you throw out and it will bounce off of enemies. So it lets you deal damage to multiple enemies at one time and the animation of a letter popping up is kind of cool. However, this was my least favorite ability of them all. Its damage is minute considering it costs three access at a time. I get that it damages more than one enemy, but it does not decrease enemies health bars enough for that cost to be worth it. I usually just stuck to sniping one enemy at a time with homing pixel. So this one is cool in concept, but pretty useless. Exploding puppy code is really cool. You get it before the first main boss and it sends out a pixelated dog's head that barks until it explodes, dealing loads of damage. It's really funny to use and looks unique compared to just regular old source damage. I use this pretty effectively in two of the boss fights, so definitely worth picking up. Unfortunately, it costs three access to use, meaning you only get a few of them before needing to refill. But it's pretty funny and deals enough damage to be worth some extra ammo, so I messed around with it every once in a while. The Tainted Knife Code can be bought from the Merchant in the main town area, and it is by far the most broken ability in the last hero of Nostalgia. It only costs 2 access to use and will poison the enemy upon impact as well as dealing a bit of damage. It only misses when an enemy is moving side to side, but that does not happen often. If you have 20 access on hand, you can use 10 of these in a single boss fight. Just throw one every time the poison wears off and you can deal considerable damage with zero skill required. I use this tactic to defeat anything that looked tough or simply annoying to fight. And it certainly made the last boss a joke and let me beat him in one try. Seriously, this thing's extremely useful and the poison lasts quite a while. I had a ton of fun with it and as far as I could tell, nothing was immune to poison damage. Maybe more resistant, but not immune. So find the merchant very early on in the game, and yeah, it will make your life much easier. Green Herb Code heals the player over time. It has one of the highest access costs in the game at 5 per cast, but that's passive healing. I rarely use this. It's obviously very helpful if you have extra ammo on hand, but since I chose the sorcerer, I primarily focused on dealing damage with this access rather than saving it just in case. This can be found after the first main boss, and I only started to use it later on. It's nice because it heals over time, so you can focus on combat and still take a few hits without much worrying. You also find green herbs which do the same thing as this though, so most people won't use it unless you take a character where you're never using access at all, and this could be an extra just fun option to have for free healing. The Overflow Nova Code is my second favorite ability in this game. It freezes enemies around you for what seemed like 3 to 4 seconds. This is huge when you get to the end game as enemies are harder to dodge and often attack relentlessly. This lets you simply stop them in their tracks and attack while they stand there like idiots. I love this and it's definitely one of the better codes as its usefulness on mob enemies is unmatched. It even freezes multiple targets, so say you get ambushed. This can save you from instantly dying. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to work on bosses. This makes sense as in most games, there are a few abilities that would make bosses pointless if they worked on them. Use this against mobs as much as you want though. It's really funny to hit opponents that can't fight back. This does cost three access at a time, but you're freezing enemies. It could cost five and still be crazy good. Next up, we have the pop-up code, and this is your decoy. Use two access to spawn a copy of your pixel self. Enemies will then be aggressive towards it first, giving you time to heal or even backstab them. I found this to be a very cool ability that was useful against hyper aggressive enemies. Unfortunately, it isn't perfect. Enemies seem to switch back to you if you get really close before attacking and often they won't even bother with it if you pop it after they've begun to attack you. I think there's some experience that needs to be had to use it effectively. I'm guessing they didn't make it take all attention off of you in every scenario, so you still need to skillfully use it. 
Either way, it still works very well in most cases, and it takes multiple hits before disintegrating. Security code is pretty worthless in most cases. It costs 10 access to use and will lock your memory to you. This means when you die, you keep your memory and don't need to pick it up again. Obviously, this is super helpful if you're exploring a new area or maybe just trying to run past some things, but you have a decent amount of memory saved up. But that's a very rare case, as areas of the game are all connected back to each other and running past enemies usually isn't that difficult. I never use this at all, but it is nice to have as a potential option. I remember getting it later on as well, so don't expect it to save you in the first half of the game. One ability that I recently found was the Source Weapon Code. I grabbed this on my non-Sorcerer character so I didn't have the ability to use it. However, from the description, we can tell it applies Source Damage to your weapon. There are items that do this as well without costing any access, but if you wanted an unlimited supply of that, this could be a great option. Source is often very powerful and a character that was skilled in, say, dexterity could benefit highly from an extra amount of damage on hit. The source requirement isn't all that high either, and it only costs 2 ammo to cast. I grabbed this in a chest in the dark forest area called the Wilds. I imagine this could be very useful for a variety of characters, while other codes in this game are more focused for sorcerers only. Magic, in the last hero of Nostalgia, is very powerful and unique. I think that the sorcerer character I made was loads of fun and maybe the easiest way to beat the game? I imagine pure strength does deal a lot of damage too, so I can't say that for sure, but the amount you can do from a safe distance is incredible. Access is also not hard to get at all, and as you progress, you will probably end up with a decent amount saved up in storage for when you rest. If not, simply do side quests and kill enemies along the way with melee weapons to refill. And that brings me around to the magic-based weapons. There are quite a few here, and most of them have a thrusting animation similar to a jousting weapon. I hated those. They felt very slow for combo attacks and stunning enemies. I took a lot of hits in the early game because I simply couldn't move into attacks as much as I wanted. Source based weapons deal much less stagger or momentum as it's called here, so you aren't going to keep enemies at bay very long. The Sword of Service, on the other hand, was amazing. This was my favorite source weapon by far as it was very fast and let me attack over and over without getting hit. This can be found in the Warlock's Wild or Dark Wooded area after the second main boss. It looks very stylish and can also be remembered near one of the pylons you light here, making it an amazing option for any source-based character. This is the weapon I beat the game with and it felt very solid in each of the different areas I fought in. My entire reason for telling you this is magic can't be spammed. You will get some access back when fighting, but often spamming will run you dry pretty quickly. Finding a nice source weapon to use when you feel more comfortable against an enemy can save you the hassle of running out of access when you run into harder enemies. So definitely pick this thing up if you get to the forest. It felt very reliable and much better than that poke style of attacking. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about the magic system in The Last Hero of Nostalgia. It's very powerful and very fun to get your hands on, and I didn't ever regret taking a sorcerer character. Obviously, you'll need to find better codes around the world and upgrade your weapons to deal good damage in the end of the game. In fact, I think my source was upgraded to over 30, leading to some pretty hefty magic damage. It may take you a bit to fully understand how the access works, but it's a pretty competent system that lets you have a lot of fun. Oh, and don't forget that some enemies also deal magic damage to you. You may want to throw on different shields sometimes for when you run into these monsters. For the most part, you can stick with the main 100% block physical shields, but it's worth noting. Thanks for watching the video, and if you enjoyed the information, feel free to hit that like button. I have thoroughly enjoyed this game so far, and currently I am making my way through a second time. It's pretty funny how many things I missed, as there are plenty of chests and secret passageways that can't be unlocked until you reach certain story points in the end game. So do check this game out, as it has a lot to offer, and the story's honestly worth it alone great story and as a sorcerer you can harness the power of memory and dethrone those heroes who hold this world hostage catch you next time